Okay, so now let's look at some buffers. So buffers are um, a solution that has a conjugate acid-base pair, and they're weak acids and bases. Um, if they were strong, they would completely neutralize each other, and then it would defeat the purpose of, of what a buffer is supposed to do, which is try to keep the pH the same. So it's um, particularly resistant to changes in pH. So basically, if you add a strong acid or a strong base, then the weak acid or weak base in the buffer will absorb it. They're going to react with it, neutralize it. And then you see only really minor changes in the pH. So we have a lot of buffers in our body. We have blood buffers to keep the pH in your, in your blood constant. And we'll see um, a bunch of examples of these. So what's happening here, um, if we had something like this. Okay, so if we have an HF and F minus buffer, so we have a little bit of this acid, a little bit of this conjugate base. If you had um, some of the acid, so if we had, uh, or if we had some strong acid, so that's going to react with the F minus. If we added some hydronium to it, and we would make something like this. So we can say if we added a strong acid, it's going to react with the weak base, and you're going to make a weak acid. Now, if you added a strong base, that should react with the weak acid, which would make um, some weak base and some water over there. So a, a weak acid plus a strong base gives you a weak base. So that's kind of your, your cheat there. Strong acid plus a weak base gives you a weak acid. Strong base plus a weak acid gives you a weak base. And so th those are kind of like the generic form of the reactions that we're going to look at. Um, the trick is that you need to figure out who's the acid and who's the base in any of these situations. Now, there's a really simple way to calculate the pH of a buffer uh, using the henderson hasselbalch equation, which is right here. pH equals pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And you can derive that really easily if you just look at a generalized um, like acid ionization reaction. So if we had HA, so that's just our generic acid in water, and you make some hydronium. Whoops. And some A minus there. You can set up your Ka expression. Hydronium A minus all over HA. And then if I took the negative log of both sides, negative log of this, negative log of all that, I get like the negative log of the Ka equals negative log of the hydronium. I'm going to split up this log plus the negative log of the A minus over HA concentrations there. Now this is just, that's a pKa, right? Negative log of the Ka is a pKa. Negative log of hydronium is pH. And then we're keeping this in this base over the acid minus the log of, that's basically base over acid. All right. And then if you want to solve for pH, then I'm just going to add this log of the base over the acid on both sides. And then that's how you end up with the henderson hasselbalch equation. Just to simplify it there, you get pH equals, all right, pH, because I just canceled that, equals the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. So it just comes from, um, you know, your general acid ionization reaction. But once you have that, and then you're good to go. So you can find the pKa, even if they give you the Ka, like in this next problem they give you the Ka. So you do negative log of the Ka to get the pKa. Um, these are just acid and base concentrations, and then you can solve for the pH. So let's let's try to use this henderson hasselbalch equation down here in this problem. Uh, what's the pH of a buffer? So whenever you see buffer, think this equation. Think henderson hasselbalch um, that is 0.12 molar in lactic acid, and they give you the whole formula. Sometimes they'll give you the name, and that's really easy because then you know that that's the acid concentration, so you can write acid over here, uh, 0 0.12, and then base is the other one, the sodium lactate, 0 0.10. Sometimes that's the hardest part, trying to figure out who's the acid, who's the base. How can you tell the difference? Um, the acid's gonna have an extra H plus. Remember that from chapter 16. And then they give us the Ka, so we want to find a pKa. <clears throat> pKa is just negative log 
of the Ka. 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. And when you work that out, work that out, you get 3.85. And now you're ready to plug that into the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. So you have pH equals the pKa plus the log of the base, always base over, over the acid. Um, and so when you do this part, which is good, make sure you, you know, do it in baby steps, that's fine. You get negative 0.08. So you have 3.85 plus a negative, um, negative 0.08. So you end up with a pH that is 3.77. Um, so make sure you don't just multiply this whole thing through. People do that all the time. They don't realize that that's a plus sign there. Um, they think it's a multi you know multiplication sign. pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. Problems are pretty straightforward. Um, we can try another one. Calculate the concentration of sodium benzoate that must be present in a 0.2 molar solution of benzoic acid to produce a pH of this, and they give you the Ka. So now you're trying to find a concentration. So you have to figure out who's the acid, who's the base here. So if you want to pause for a second and try to do this on your own, that's fine. Um, calculate the concentration of the sodium benzoate. All right, and this is the benzoic acid. So they, we're trying to find the base concentration. We don't know what that one is. And the acid concentration is 0.2. They give us the pH. And we can find the pKa just by doing negative log of 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. And that gives us 4.20. And now we can plug all this in. So we have pH. So if you got the pH and then the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. So base, um, that's what we're looking for over the acid. Let's call that base. And the acid concentration is 0.20. All right, so subtract the 4.2 and you get negative 0.20 is equal to the log of the base over 0.2. Now this 0.2 has nothing to do with that 0.2. It's just a coincidence that they're the same number. Um, don't read too much into that. You can separate those logs using some log rules. So I have negative 0.20 is the log of the base minus the log of 0.2. So when you have the log of you know x over y, that's the same as the log of x minus the log of y. Just using some log rules. Um, all right, so we can do that. So we have negative 0.20 is the log of the base, and this right here ends up being um, minus a negative 0.699. So now I can subtract out that 0.699, and I get negative 0.889 is the log of the base concentration and to undo that log base 10 I have 10 10 to the log of the base just gives me the base concentration and 10 to the negative 8.99 is 0 0.13 molar all right, so this problem was a little bit different than the others because they, um, the other two problems, they gave you the pKa and the concentrations you solve for the pH. This time they gave you the pH, the pKa, one concentration, and you're solving for this other concentration. So it's just a little bit of tricky math over here with these logs, um, but it's not too bad. Uh, so a little bit more about buffers. The pH range, that's pretty much the range over which the, 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 the buffer is going to work effectively. Usually it's like plus or minus one pH unit. So if you're trying to find, um, so if you're trying to buffer at a certain pH, you want to choose a weak acid that has a pKa kind of close to the pH that you're you're trying to uh, to buffer at. Um, it also works best if you have about equal concentrations of your weak acid and weak base. If you have too much of one, then you're going to use it up too fast. Yeah, and then you don't you want to make sure that they're weak and not the strong ones because the strong ones will just neutralize each other and then that's not really going to be effective. 
Buffering capacity is just the amount of the strong acid or strong base that you can neutralize before the pH starts changing drastically. So it tells you like how, how much can you really neutralize.